Hi everyone, thanks for coming back to my channel. This is a video that I always wanted to make, and it's not just to edutain you. This is my petition to declare the dish featured in this video as the Cypriot national dish. I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer. The dish that should be considered the Cypriot national food is... Kupepkia me to kolokasi. First things first, I would like to emphatically disagree with creator Quok that the national dish of Cyprus is fasolada. It's a no-no. I also disagree that the national dish of Cyprus is macaronia me to bulli, or pasta with chicken. It's, it's too meh. The third dish that probably is our national dish, is called souvla, which is either pork or lamb on a huge skewer, rotating over live charcoal for a very long time. But I think it's a bit too simple to be declared as the national dish because it's just fire and meat, nothing else. Therefore, souvla doesn't represent the resourcefulness and ingenuity displayed by Cypriots in order to stretch their meat found in Kupepkia with Kologasi. And that's why I declare that the Cypriot national dish should be Kupepkia with Kologasi. Another reason why Kupepkia should be the national dish of Cyprus is the fact that it represents the multiple ingredients brought by all the colonizers Cyprus had over the millennia. So what are Kupepkia exactly? They are stuffed vine leaves filled with pork, rice, onion, mint, and in some cases parsley. A brief history of the dish is that, in one form or another, it has been eaten since the Hellenistic period of Cyprus, as an early version of the dish developed by the Greeks was called thria, and it was made with fig leaves. Furthermore, we have evidence that Cyprus produced and consumed a lot of wine since at least 3000 BC. This makes Cyprus one of the most ancient wine-producing countries in the world. Why is this important? Because the transition from fig leaves to vine leaves needed an abundance of vine leaves in order to do so. And this happened when Cypriots started producing commercially wine. Rice in Cyprus. Kupepkia were probably made with wheat or barley mini pasta similar to what we have today as burguri or bulgar wheat. There is one source that states that rice was brought by the Arabs to Cyprus somewhere between the late 600s to 1000, but I doubt that that is the case. This is because Cyprus belonged to empires that knew about and traded rice. This is a quote that proves it. In the Mediterranean, the Greeks and Romans knew about rice, but regarded it as an expensive import to be used mainly as a medicine. Taro in Cyprus. Taro, or Colocasia esculenda, or as we Cyprus call it, Colocasi is the most widely used name for members of a group of tropical root crops, mostly of the genus Colocasia. Taro originated in India or in Southeast Asia and may have been first cultivated as early as 5000 BC. Colocasi is botanically speaking a corm. What is that, you ask? I'm going to use a Wikipedia definition. Sorry about that. Corm, bulbotuber or bulbotuber, is a short, vertical, swollen, underground plant stem that serves as a storage organ that some plants use to survive winter or other adverse conditions such as summer drought and heat. Colocasi looks like a big, round, potato, with usually white, pink, or purple flesh. As with rice, I could not find exactly who brought taro in Cyprus, 
but I did find a journal article authored by Ilaria Maria Grimaldi et al. at Public Library of Science, which argued Colocasi made its way into the Eastern Mediterranean sometime in the late pre-Christian era. It was in the region probably since the 5th century BC. During that time, Cyprus changed a lot of hands, from the Assyrians to the Egyptians to uh, the Greeks under Alexander the Great and then the Ptolemies. The tarot was probably then brought by the Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Greeks, or the Romans, all of which either belonged in the, in the Hellenic world or have trade routes with the Hellenic world. Here is a table from Grimaldi et al.'s study that shows the literal uses of taro in the ancient Mediterranean. Therefore, it is very likely that Cypriots consumed taro at least since the 1st century AD, when it was widely eaten in the Levant. The Oxford Companion to Food has taro being cultivated in Egypt since at least 100 BC, whereas the Cambridge World History of Food has taro being extremely popular in the Eastern Mediterranean during Alexander the Great's reign. So, Cypriots, like all the other people who use taro in their everyday life, figured out that you need to boil the taro to remove the oxalic acid present in its outer layer. And what better way than to use taro as a supplement for a dish that already is stretching your very small portions of meat. Kolokasi me ta kupepkia. The final vital ingredient of kupepkia with kolokasi is the tomato. Probably a lot of you know this already, the tomato did not exist in Europe before the Columbian exchange. When tomatoes were brought in Europe, people were really suspicious of them because they belonged in the Solinese family, which were poisonous. Again, I could not find an exact date as to when the tomato was first brought to Cyprus or when it was eaten, but I did find that in the early 19th century, It was grown as a decorative plant in Greece, brought there by the Ottomans. Also, I found out that Ottoman recipe books began featuring them sometime in the late 19th century. Since Cyprus was also part of the Ottoman Empire, I think the tomato was introduced to Cyprus also sometime in the mid-19th century. By the end of 19th century, there are already recipes and people complaining about the prices of tomatoes in Cypriot newspapers. This kind of supports my hypothesis. Tomato juice is added within the kupepkia, but also taro and kupepkia are being slowly simmered in the wonderful juice of tomatoes and lemon for half an hour. Tomato becomes the base and flavor delivery vehicle of the dish. It's just wonderful. The Cyprus Virtual Food Museum has recipes for both kupepkia and kolokasi, which I have translated and added in the comment section. So this version of kupepkia meto kolokasi is actually quite modern, but simultaneously very ancient. It's just the perfect dish to be named as our national dish, because it shows the various waves of colonization, migration, and trade in which Cyprus participated in. I think it better represents the culture of Cyprus. If you live in Cyprus or you are visiting soon, you should definitely try this dish. Unfortunately, it's not very easy to find it in a restaurant, but all the more the reason for you to meet a local. Maybe they will invite you to have a plate or two. What do you think? Should Kubepkia Metokologasi be the Cypriot national dish? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Did you enjoy watching this video? Then try watching 
this video on the history of carbonara or this video on the history of margarita pizza. Until the next one, bye!